Hello, Property Nomads. Hope you're doing well. We've spoken about low emission zones and ultra low emission zones before. Uh, this one is laughable and sad at the same time. So I feel sorry for you if you live in this particular area of the UK because one way or another, you're probably getting screwed by your very own council. Let's have a look at this article to see what we mean. And it is right here. It is by the Daily Mail via MSN and a bill for council to hire vehicles to comply with its own low emission zone laws hits one million pounds. The Glasgow Council, Glasgow City Council, had introduced the low emission zone, like quite a few places in and around the UK. But what they found was that their vehicles that they already had in place weren't compliant. So they've had to spend, and you can see the total here for yourself, one to date at the time of recording, £1,068,731 the council has spent on hiring vehicles to fill in for its own ones which are non-compliant with the new zone that they introduced. The mind boggles. The mind absolutely boggles at stuff like this. It really does. Because as well as, number one, it being stupid, secondly, we have to look at who's paying for this. Because if Glasgow City Council get the approval from Holyrood, which is where the Scottish government is, how are they funding this in the first place? Are they funding this? I'm going to call it 1.1 million for argument's sake. Are they funding that 1.1 million out of their own bank account? Which is possible. I'm going to say it's unlikely, but it is possible. Are they then asking the Scottish Parliament to give them the funds? Which, if that's the case, then is the Royal Bank of Scotland or potentially the Royal Bank of England one of those two? Are they then printing the currency? Because if they're printing that currency into existence for Glasgow City Council to borrow it, then that's inflationary and that's going to affect everyone because inflation is the, the stealth tax that more people need to know about. Or are they just going to increase taxes in order to pay for their shortcomings, which in that case affects anyone that pays council tax to the Glasgow City Council? Either way, you're in a situation where you lose. There's no two ways about it. You're just in a situation where you lose. If they have funded it out of their own bank account because they've got surplus cash, then fine, fair enough. I'll hold my hands up and I'll credit where credit's due. But I would imagine that's probably not going to be the case because most councils are very shoddily run. Now, what's happened here? is it says here that all of this or this news comes despite the council dismissing concerns of businesses and commuters, many of them who many of whom have been forced out of the city or they've had to buy new cards because the council told them that they need to buy new cards in order to not get charged. To add insult to injury, supposedly the money was spent or currency was spent as the local authority act more than 170 teachers amid claims it couldn't afford them. They're now being threatened with industrial action as a result. I do like this, the fact that it says critics have also pointed out the farcical nature of the costly zones, given that the key pollutant, nitrogen dioxide, was within legal limits before the low emission zone began in June last year. And it is only marginally reduced since then. Okay, well, this gives us a whole different ball game because the zones are costly to put in because you need more cameras, you need more policing, you need more ways of monitoring it, collecting fines, whatever it might be. Interestingly, the critics are saying that the key pollutant which is nitrogen dioxide, was actually within legal limits before the low emission zone began in June last year. So I've long said this, if any council wants to introduce the low emission zone, just come out and say, we're skint, we need the cash, this is what we're going to do. I would imagine you'd probably get a bit more respect at least than trying to go down the, 
oh, we're saving the climate, we're saving the world, we're trying to do better for everyone. Because when something like this pops up, where they're getting rid of people in, in I imagine, key jobs, and then they're having to spend 1.1 million to hire vehicles to comply with emission standards that their own council have put in, while screwing over by the sounds of it, local businesses. I, I mean, it's a good job of sat down. So I don't really know what else to say on the matter. It, the mind boggles and it's, it's almost criminal. If you and I try to run our businesses like this, we would have, I don't know, cat and nine tails. We'd be flogged through the streets. It's just unbelievable that council can cont continue to get away with this absolute nonsense. It really, really is. But let's just run through this again. Let's just make sure that I I've got to go through this again to make sure I believe this. So Glasgow City Council have implemented a low emission zone. And they gave people plenty of time to let them know that they were introduced in this zone. It seems to me, from what the critics are saying, that actually the nitrogen dioxide was already within the legal limits anyway. So really, there's no need to bring in that zone in the first place. The council tell everyone that it, it, it's coming in. And then the council then don't do anything to their own fleet of vehicles. So when the low emission zone does come in, they then have to spend 1.1 million of finance to hire vehicles to then meet with its own compliance standard. And again, unless they've got surplus cash in the bank, which if they have and they can afford it that way, then I guess a little bit of credit where credit's due. But bar that, what's happening is that that currency is either being borrowed or council tax bills are going to go up and local business rates, whatever they might be, might go up as a result because of their own stupidity. So at the end of the day, you and I, well, not myself, I don't live near Glasgow, but you lose out if you live in, in, in and around Glasgow. It's utter madness. We all lose out through inflation because the currency is being printed, then it's a different story. Now, I don't know if it would have been cheaper for them just to give themselves fines, but then that might not answer the whole issue because how do they then collect the fines? Probably through themselves, which means probably through your council tax or through borrowing the currency into existence. So you're in a lose-lose situation. But the mind, the mind boggles at this because this is the sort of stuff that councils continually get away with. And they, it would just be better if they turned around and said it's a cash cow and rather do it under the guise of climate change. And then to sack off people and then have to find 1.1 million pounds down the back of a sofa for hire vehicles to meet their own standards that they set in the first place, despite giving everyone warnings. Uh, but apparently they didn't heed the warning themselves. No comment is how I'm going to summarise that. Um, if you've got any ideas, leave a comment below. I'd love to know. We'll put a link in the description as always and a small favor to us please do like and subscribe to the show that would be absolutely fantastic i'm sure there's going to be a lot more mind-boggling things coming up when i find them i'll let you know we'll do some more videos until then see you soon